Oh, <coughs> all right. Good morning. Come on, Telly Boo. How are you? All right. Well, I had to find the music to turn it off. I'm like, where'd the music come from? All right. So let's get on with it. Uh, hey, welcome to Quant Box Live. Yeah, we're. It's time to get our quant on, get our macro on. Quant Box Live is where we have covered the best fundamental opportunities across global markets. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm a macro trend trader. I've been doing that for 20 years. I'm also uh, an economist trained at a little private school in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Very cool. So anyways, we have all these pretty colors. And what they do at Quant Box is automate your macroeconomic research and then does comparative anal analysis between asset classes so you can find out what trends are in place smart money tracker for example is actually showing you the commitment of traders report and the different positioning of institutional traders anyways if you're watching this on youtube guess what it's not 6 32 uh, in the morning it's 10 something in the morning so what you're watching is delayed why don't you swing box, uh, swing by quantbox.co and try a trial, eight bucks. And you can see things like, ooh, we organize all your currency pairs by strongest versus weakest. And yes, that's based on things like COT data, retail sentiment, seasonality, technical trend, uh, GDP, inflation, unemployment, in interest rate divergence, all that kind of stuff. There's also a macroeconomic course and a course on how to do the statistical analysis with QuantBox. An amazing $8. Anyways, let's get on with it. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money, cannot afford to lose. And here's the coffee I made last night around 4 o'clock. <laughs> I haven't even sipped it. I'm like, does a ghee go bad? I don't think so. Uh, maybe it does. Yeah. Uh, Emil says no sound. It looks like there's sound. Do you have sound? Uh, yeah. All right. Good. I'd like, I'd melt like a Porsche V8 engine if, uh, if that happened. Anyways. Yeah, anywho. Uh, all right, so today must be Friday. Very nice. Very cool. Um, uh, uh, so let's log in. So not much has happened recently. Oh, the Fed raised interest rates. Oh, that's cool. And the ECB raised interest rates. Oh, that's cool. And Bank Japan is allowing yields to float. Uh, that's nice. But besides all that, nothing's happened. Let's log in. Log. <laughs> I guess the developers are taking their sweet time on this. Uh, maybe they don't even know. They didn't notice. Um, maybe I'll let them... <clears throat> I'll update them again that this ain't working. Uh, it, it says neutral across the board, but look at the score. I mean, you can you can tell <laughs> it's not neutral. So anyways, look, uh, yield on the 10-year T-note just tipped out over 4% again. That's, that's risk on. Money's coming out of the, out of the bond market, in this case, treasury market. Okay, money's coming out. Yields rise when money's leaving. So that's kind of interesting. Um, as we sit above 4.0, it'll attract money. Okay? You would think. Um, that's interesting. 4.0. We haven't been there in, in, what, two or three weeks? And it doesn't tend to stay there very long. Because people might say, hey, I think inflation is going to be 3% next year, 2% the year after, 1% the year after, and this will be a moneymaker. I can lock in 4% forever. Um, all right, so eventually, the higher that goes, the more it will attract investors. 
SP 500 uh, actually down a little bit. Oil hit the 80 mark yesterday. Did you guys notice that? We planned that out about two weeks ago. It just slowly and slowly, slowly went up and uh, it took days to actually hit 80. We hit 80 and it stopped. Very nice. Okay. Is that the right price on Bitcoin? No, that's not the right price. Is that the right price? No, I don't know. We'll look at that. I guess that's the right price, yeah. Uh, anyways, a bit of a mixed bag. Euro dollar flat, so it's really, once again, mixed bag here on the short run. Did anything change on the longer run? Ha 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 ha. Clear is mud. Quantbox is looking at everything across the board and it says, mm, patience, grasshopper. Patience. Amazing, huh? After all that. The biggest news is going to be yield curve control out of the Bank of Japan. Just seeing uh, where we can go with this. Uh, like with, let's pick a yen currency here. I'm on this one. Loading, loading, loading. Keep this puppy loading. Great. I'm waiting for the seasonality. <laughs> it's the last thing to load. Come on. How does it know? And uh, you can see this period is typically down anyways. With the yen pairs. Didn't we make a big stink about a turning point on Canada Day, July 1st? Yup. Mm -hmm. And it falls to what? Third week of August? Uh-huh. So we had yield curve control yesterday. And it really brought the yen pairs down. Um, but it's amazing how these things tend to fit what was likely to happen anyways. Every year it's something, but it seems to happen every year, <laughs> right? Everything, every year it's something. It's always something. But for whatever reason, they come down. So it's kind of interesting that we roll into some of these uh, pairs, and you can see July to the August period down. And many of the technical trends are, are down or somewhat down. So going back to here, like, you can see quant box is pointing this down. And it's not unusual. Now, there has been, um, is it an official change yet or an unofficial change at the Bank of Japan? Like they're going to let it float, but to float to what? One point, was it one? It is official? Yeah, okay. I've been busy the last 12 hours, so I haven't had a chance to get good data on it. Um, and media is so unclear. <laughs> right. Uh, I was listening to uh, one news station this morning. And they're like, Trump's been indicted yet again. And I'm like, that sounds <laughs> just saying yet again sounds uh, biased. But anyways, and they're like, he. He told someone to destroy video footage. And then he le listened to the next station. They're like, well, actually, he told somebody who then did something and then nothing actually happened. And you're like, well, then I don't know. So anyways, media is very unclear. And they were very unclear with what Bank of Japan actually said and actually was doing. And so I, I feel like I don't have hard data on that. I know the yield curve control is uh, being adjusted by Ureda, and uh, I have conflicting data on what they're going to let it go to. And some some reports made it sound like it wasn't official yet, that they were thinking about it, you know, rumored to. So anyways, I got to get harder data over the weekend. Uh, but nonetheless, what happens is if the yield curve is allowed to rise above five, uh, 0.50, yen will get strong. 
that's that. That's that. But if you were seasonally trading, you're probably already long yen. So that's the biggest thing driving these currency markets right now. Uh, the next big thing is whether uh, the stock market goes up or down today in response to all the central bank stuff that's happened the last few days. So Kiwi's weak and Japanese yen is strong. That's what you would expect in a scenario like this. Aussie's weak. Okay. Euro is weak. Okay. So you could be short Aussie yen, Euro yen, Kiwi yen or short Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, or Kiwi dollar. So since this is primarily a yield curve control issue, we'll go here, and here's a trade that I did slightly after Canada Day, and uh, I'm still short. So it is, what, the 27th? 28th. So I've been short this, uh, uh, you know, going on four weeks. And uh, it's still working out okay. And you're like, oh, man, you got lucky on yield curve control. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I totally did. Yep. But it's still my trade plan, and I still have it drawn out. And if you remember, my target was down here. And I think it was like 500 pips or something like that, five, maybe 600 pips. So I'm about halfway there. It's always something. This year is different than the last. But it's always something. So anywho, it's working its way down on a daily. Big little range here. Big little range. Take a look at like Aussie. Okay, this is the breach out of that channel. And you'll see how dramatic it was. And how important it was. Technically, this is why we draw channels. You want to identify that you're in a channel. But you also want to identify when the channel is broken. It's very important. So let me get my drawing tool. And, uh, where is it? No, it's not coming up. Let me try it again. I'm not seeing it. Uh, all right, I guess I don't have a drawing tool. Uh, anyways, what I wanted to point out here is uh, amateur traders, when they see a big move, they say, I'm going to miss it. It's that whole fear of missing out, FOMO. Uh, it's not true, by the way. It's an irrational response to something that was unpredictable. What you should do is wait for the pullback and sell lower highs. You should already know price action, okay, that kind of stuff. So this way back here was if the channel is going to hold, you'd want to buy a dip. So you might have been waiting for a dip, and then you got the collapse. So this is a failed trade plan. It's not a, a loser. It's not a loser. It's very informative that it didn't work. Okay, so anyways, uh, when a channel breaks, whether it's horizontal or sloped, okay, you let it break, don't worry about it, okay, and catch the pullback. If you're patient and disciplined, the markets will reward you because the markets love you. It's a love thing. It's a respect thing. If you have, if you don't have patience and discipline, the markets will not respect you. And you'll be run over like a freight train. So anyways, it takes a lot of guts to let this drop and come back and present a trading opportunity for you. Now, another thing to point out, and this is very, very common, Okay, not always, but very, very common. It's precisely 50% retracement. So whether there's a human that is patient and disciplined or simply an algo that says, you know, after the drop, wait for a 50% pullback, 
Either way, that's what I want you to, to do too. Okay. Remember, it's an issue of respect. If you don't, if you're not the patient and disciplined one, the rest of the institutional investors will not respect you. And you'll just get run over. <laughs> So Kiwi, Kiwi's doing all right. Okay, here's these lines in the sand that we drew quite some time ago. We know they're important numbers. Look at the volatility here. But you notice? Nice little roll reversal. All you had to do is wait. Oh, no, it's moving without me. I'll miss it. I mean, honestly, just imagine... How many retail traders sold down here? Because they didn't know what was going on. They have no idea that it's yield curve control. It's just moving and it's moving fast. So they see the big red candle and they sell it low. I don't sell low. I can tell you that much. So anyways, it did pull back. Once again, if we flip this, uh, will it let me flip the fib? And yeah, we can flip the fib here. So it made that dramatic drop, okay? And it did a 618 this time. And then dropped. So if you were to trade this, it's up here that I want you to sell it. Um, or you sold it much earlier because you were already a bear based on seasonality. But the fact that there's a giant red candle is totally irrelevant to this trade plan. And if I, if you work for me at a hedge fund and I saw you trading inside this candle, um, you'd get an earful from me. And I'd probably cut your capital stack in half. And... I'm going to put you in the office at the back with a view of the garbage cans. <clears throat> it also has a window that opens. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look out there. Oh, 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 well, and I'll call the HR person. Let's start recruiting. <laughs> we got we to gotta make it see. Uh, So-and-so fell out the window. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the garbage can. Anyways, patience and discipline. Uh, so you're either, I either see a trade up here or I see a trade here uh, and not reaction. Okay, cool. Anyways, I mean, seriously, do you remember like all these vertical lines and then, okay, the vertical line is the prediction that the Euro yen might go from ridiculously bullish just suddenly just out of the blue. I even talked about it, like it's not even on the chart. There's nothing on the chart that would predict this. So we had we hit this vertical line and sure enough it drops. Drops into our sport rallies up and this happened on a lot of currency pairs. Then we double topped. So uh, I'm not saying you should be, but you could be up in here somewhere short. Okay? Or now it's broken lower. Now you're using, you know, using this stuff. Maybe, maybe it'll continue down. Maybe the next move looks more like uh, if it'll let me draw. Maybe the next move technically looks like this. Okay. Notice. Uh, there was a yield curve control change at the Bank of Japan, and then suddenly the 10-year T-note is at 4%. Do you think Japanese investors dumped some 10-year T-note, brought some money home to pay for their higher borrowing costs? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So anyways, how does the uh, Japanese stock market feel about um, higher costs? Uh, 
Ugle. Ugle. Pretty amazing, huh? Okay, quite amazing. Notice that the fall started at the August M3, and now we're at the August, roughly, August central pivot point. So there's two ways of trading this technically. You mark this as a top, you mark this as a bottom, and you wait for a break. Or you sell it off the uh, month uh, August central pivot. So let's, uh, it's 32 and a half basically. And it's a little higher now. What is that? 32,700. Um, and if you sold it, your target is way down here at uh, 30,000. It's actually 30,800. So let's say 31,000. Okay. Down. Now, you should also know QuantBox helps you understand that between the third week of August and the third week of September, all of these are likely to go up. But you should also have known in June that around July 1st, all these yen pairs come down. That's what QuantBox is telling you. Now, you wouldn't have believed me, and you probably didn't believe me, when we talked about it in June, and then it has happened. So I want you to learn from that. Uh, every year is different from the last, but there are repeatable patterns. It's not hocus pocus to say, well, generally every year over the last 20 years, the yen pairs get strong in July. Cool. They did. Oh, but Wayne, it was yield curve control. This year is different. Yeah. Well, every year was different, but it happened. Okay. And so now the next thing is, these might go through a period of down. We don't know. But because I have the seasonal analysis, on the third week of August, I will be at my desk ready, willing, and able to maybe start buying yen pairs back. But that's not today. So thank you, QuantBox, for having that kind of data. 20 years. So I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll see you at the next next webinar uh, on FX Street. And for those that are part of the swing trading group, my apologies last night. Uh, no people were injured, which is good. Um, but if you want to buy a slightly used, very rare Porsche, with slight burn marks, <laughs> you can be call. <laughs> um, I, I I said to the, you know, I said like, oh, if I had to sell this car now, and someone came along and like, is that burn marks on the engines? I'm like, yeah, well, it's just a small fire. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Oh, don't worry about it. It was just a small fire. <laughs> It might diminish the value of the Porsche. So anyways, uh, yeah, but no people or animals were injured in the making of this uh, amazing science experiment. So uh, yeah, so everybody's safe. And I'm happy. That's great. That's great. Um, but if you want to buy a slightly burnt Porsche, you let me know. Uh, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above, above average. Yeah, V8. Yeah. Smoking. Anyways. Cheers.